You're right, guys. Welcome to episode 16 of Muscle Owl Talks. So today we're joined by John Hasty. Um, many people will know a wonderful film, uh, Life Worth Living, that came out a few years ago. Well, you, you part run a charity called DMD Pathfinders, and we thought it'd be real good to maybe do an introductory episode about some of the stuff that you do, kind of why, why you do it. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess it did all really start with the film. Um, so, you know, me identifying all these kind of older adults living with Duchenne, kind of people that had achieved something with their, with their time as well. So, yeah, you know, putting all the film together, meeting all these amazing people, and kind of in the process of doing that, kind of realising just all the barriers that people face, really, as adults, and the kind of, well, the themes that emerged around, you know, people not expected to live very long but actually due to various improvements suddenly they were still around but it's kind of like a an unforeseen generation so to speak so that just kind of like highlighted all the challenges that people face and then on the back of that i was in, invited to join action duchenne um as a as a trustee and also getting involved in their taking charge project which was lottery funded and <laughs> set up to help people aged 14 to 19 with with Duchenne to kind of transition into adulthood and plan for, for their futures for their futures so I sat on a steering committee with a few other adults and that really kind of galvanized us seeing what an impact us sharing our experiences and kind of our achievements with the younger generation can actually have and just seeing how it kind of transformed their perspectives really and uh it just showed us what power we have to actually make a difference and i think coming from that we we then set up a facebook group solely for adults with duchenne or very similar conditions but with no parents or professionals involved and very quickly got about 300 members from around the world and i think we all learned so much particularly in that early period in terms of better managing our own conditions and learning from each other and I think that just made us realize that actually we could be really powerful as a group and so that's why we decided to set up the uh, DMD Pathfinders as an independent charity and the aim of that is really well to focus on trying to uh, improve quality of life and by by basically sharing experiences and getting people together as a kind of community of, of adults. But I think we're also very much about being user-led. So, it, you know, the charity can be whatever we adults want it to be. So whatever we think as a kind of community of adults living with Duchenne and what we want to achieve. So I think the possibilities are, are endless, really. And yeah i've just started working for the charity so it's kind of going to be my job to put in put all the ideas that people have into practice and kind of bring everyone together and just give us a much more powerful voice really mm. yeah and well vivek you say that you were inspired by watching john's film seeing some of john's work so i mean that's that's first-hand evidence really of yeah that that what Pathfinders, what you initially set out to do is helping because if it's helped me, I, I, it would help a lot of people without, without you knowing really because mm. you're changing people's beliefs, which is quite difficult to change. But I think that's how powerful the MD Pathfinders is to change people's thinking because that's the only, truly that's the biggest problem disabled people face really. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. In fact, Michaela, do you want to say some, you know, a little bit about that? How maybe having a disability can, you can feel like you're alone with your disability and then maybe connecting with others can show you, wait a minute, this is, I mean, I know from an able-bodied point of view that, we, I mean, obviously it's not more of a personal mentality, but I remember always growing up with um, my, you know, my brother Andrew and always thinking that disability was 
something that was just particular, maybe peculiar to us uh, in our community. And then it wasn't until I left university and started working for Muscular Dystrophy UK and that I realized, wait, no, this is something that, you know, many, many people have. And the phrase together, we're stronger, you know, that, that way about learning from others about and about almost like compatriotship if that's a word, about kind of all grouping together as one. Part of what we're trying to do with muscle owl as well. Yeah, I like to think of it as Dumb and Rose Army, but that's just because I'm a Harry Potter nerd. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, diagnosis of anything is, is, is tough, but when, you, when you're handed um, something that's rare, I mean, there's so few, there's literally probably nobody in, in Northern Ireland that I know with SMA that I go and talk to. Um, they're more or less all in the states. Um, so you do have this degree of social isolation that happens pretty quickly, and you're isolated to no one actually knows what's going on around the world. And social networking has changed that massively. And um, back in 2008, um, resident travellers just started. It started much in the same way. Pathfinders did, and we we were sitting down, and we were like, "But oh, people have power." But people have power that they don't realise that they have and, and it's really frustrating me at the minute because I see this more and more. I see people um, being treated unfairly and they think this is perfectly fine, that it's acceptable, that it's got to happen because they're disabled. And I'm like, no, if somebody else wouldn't have to sit down and take that, you shouldn't. And you know, all right, you might have to stay sitting down, but you still don't have to take it. And it, it, um, it really infuriates me that people don't realise they have other ability. Everybody has other ability to make some sort of a change to their lives. And we do know lives that have a lot of challenges and you've got to find solutions to them. A basic one for me was crayon. I need to be able to take crayon and find another way to take it. Um, because it won't go down my YouTube and we have to find another way. So we've been getting really creative with that. Um, you know, and really basic things that anyone else would take for granted become complex. So the likes of being able to run through your front door or right through your front door independently becomes a challenge. You fit a door opener and you do that. But I didn't know that existed until I met a young man with Duchenne in Belfast. And um, I met with him and his family and they were like, do you have this? And they brought out his environmental control unit. I was like, oh my goodness, what is this world? And and he was controlling his Xbox and everything with this, and this was back in 2009, 2010. So it was early days in technology revolution, and I was just, I was floored immediately. And I went back and I said to my OT, can I have an environmental control unit? And she went, what's that? She didn't know what it was. And it, that, that yeah. sense really fascinates me. But it's where you get your strength from. And it, I really do think about like Double Doors Army, you know, they, you know, they got the strength from one another back in the dark days of the battles with Voldemort. Um, whether you believe in it or not, that's the way I I, I feel it for that. Um, you know, there was kind of good days where you've got this little secret Trump house, up a tree house, a virtual tree house, that you've got people to, to bash ideas off. And it, it's it's just a wonderful community to be involved in. Um, regardless of what capacity you're, you're involved in, but everybody has power and that's what that community brings it gives everybody the power mm. to do what they need to do yeah i think you know certainly a lot of what you've spoken about there is about practicalities understanding how to deal with a condition better understanding how to um how to get things done uh, more efficiently and everything by people power um, and, and, and I think I think that's certainly something that we see through the DMD community and the disability as, community as a whole um, I think what, certainly what I was struck by at the DMD Pathfinders Leadership Day in Coventry a few weeks ago was the kind of ethos of not just the practical side but sort of almost the mental side as well like that kind of as you say Vivek seeing others do things and things thinking, yes, I can do that myself. And in fact, that actually links to the first thing that you said, Michaela, which I've written down here. People have power, but people have power they don't realize they have. And that's that to yeah. me speaks about like the power of, that's within yourself. Like, mm. you know, I, I certainly know, well, certainly my expectations of what my brother Andrew could do, you know, were heightened by me seeing 
like John Hastie's film way back when. And, you know, when we see others, when we see others, uh, you know, leading by example, they're setting an example. And then I, th I think that always influences us and makes us think, yeah, we can do that. John, is that part of what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's often a tricky line to tread because we don't want to get into a situation where, you know, I'm saying something like, well, I can do this, so why aren't you? You know, <laughs> it, it's much more about, you know, you know, people living with Duchenne can have very varied different lives and what's important to them it differs as well. So, and that's why it has to be more than just about one person, you know, it's got to it's got to be about you know these are all the possibilities and all the things that you might want to achieve but fundamentally it's up to you it's up to what you want to do but i think there's also the fact that particularly with with duchenne and having a kind of a lower uh life, a shorter life expectancy means there's often been very few expectations on you mm. and Definitely. as an individual so you kind of certainly is a case of people not knowing what power they've got and i think a lot of the challenge for us is kind of empowering people mm. so it's not like you know demanding that they they do certain certain things but it's about giving them the knowledge and the the confidence to realize that they could achieve yeah. whatever they want to i certainly saw that when we sat around in that group and you know nine or ten different uh, young lads with dmd and the question was put to them so what do you want to do you know what are your hopes and dreams you know in for the immediate over the next few years or whatever and it wasn't based around what are your hopes and dreams as a young man with douche and musk it's just what do you want to do and there was no nothing being forced as to well you should aim to do this or this should be the center goal there was that I, I i look back and think that that variety of what everyone said was actually something that was almost a sign that it was being done done well and in the right way i think that's something that we've really realized is just how varied people's lives are and certainly in the facebook group it just had complete extremes as to you know how people might choose to live their life really yeah. And, and also what I've amazed on the website of DMD Pathfinders group is that all the uh, amazing technology people have found to help themselves. Mm. They found it themselves and it's just impressive to see a problem and think someone's already fixed that for me. Mm. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 Vivek, the the technology geek again. Vivek, mm. one more, one more, what was one of the first things that you said? You you like to find problems to oh, yeah. you like to find solutions to fix the the problems with yeah. with DMD. But that as well, it, you know, it's just a, it's a sign as well that you know you're this kind of guy, John's this kind of guy and yet you can inspire others and do your, you know your own things in in your own in way and still inspire each other absolutely yeah. we can learn from each other a lot yeah i mean i in you know, talking about people knowing that they can do something is where a lot of the problem lies i remember way 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 back in the 90s my sister decided she wanted to work for university and without giving away too much my grandpa and I said, yeah, right, you'll never get there. And just a few months after he died, she did get there. And back in the mid 90s for family from West Belfast, that just wasn't, that wasn't something that my grandma ever envisaged. And now when something happens with me, like getting towards St. James's Palace, the first thing that pops into my mind is, oh my God, my grandpa would be walking on the ceiling right now. Because that's something that he never, he never realised it was possible for a family from his area and he wanted the best for them but he also didn't want to push the boundaries too far. He was on school, he didn't think women should be talking about sport. He wouldn't let my mum kind of metal for him in the rookies, things like that were, were my grandpa. And a lot of the time I think about disability, I think about him and I think about how he didn't realise the possibilities were there. And a lot of the time that's... You know, my issue or anyone else's issue, you don't realise actually what is possible. And 
it isn't determined whether that it is possible that we can decide whether we want it or not. And the work of the MBD Pathfinder really does open that up. It broadens that horizon, and that's that's people living with the MBD say, actually, you know what? This is something that if I want to, I can achieve. Um, it might not be a straightforward path. It might be the path that anyone else gets, but in reality, if I want to, I can do it. And it's about deciding them what you want to do. That's the real beauty of it because before their stores didn't even exist. Never mind be open. Um, so making their stores exist again is something that's a little bit, a little bit special within the, the DMD community to see them doors opening up and to see people come out of their shells and say, hey, I want to do X, Y, or Z, or whatever it is, and then people will be able to support them to get there. But I always, I always think of my grandfather going, women shouldn't be on TV talking about sport. And I mean, that has become a real new for so many women. It might be a simplistic example, mm. but he didn't realise how possible he was there for any of us, and it, it was there for all of us. So um, it's just creating that door and saying, hey, this is a door that you have to do too if you want to open it. Yeah. I feel like it's almost a twofold thing. It's like realisation that you can do these things yeah. and then support to help you accomplish those things. So I think those are the two key things behind that. And I think that I always think, I'm always saying the internet's amazing and great and the biggest thing in communication since the wheel. But this is what, uh, you know, the internet's allowed. It's, it's, it's that, 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 that thing. Sorry? It's opening minds to the possibilities out there. Yeah, but that, that, that's the thing as well. It's, it's giving minds a voice to be able to show the yeah. possibility out there as well. And I think, I think maybe, maybe one of my final uh, questions was going to be to John, like with the ease and ability that Pathfinders are using and yourself are using right now to inspire and show others that you can do these things. Is there a big difference between now and when you were growing up? Well, did, did you, I almost wanted to say in the beginning, did you have, like, you've inspired me back. Did you have someone who inspired you? Were you lucky that you were able to have them, you know, just, you know, if, if, if they were through a close network, because otherwise you might not have been able to find them online? I don't know. Did you have people? Yeah, I certainly did. Yeah, there was definitely a, a, a guy at school. But, I mean, a lot of that was kind of just the fact that, that he was older. And, you know, I think at the time I was obsessed about, you know, life experience. Expectancy. And so it was almost like he was a role model just because he was older. <laughs> yeah. But but no, yeah. certainly over time there's definitely been and uh yeah, I don't think I would have like been involved in like founding um Pathfinders if it wasn't for Mark Chapman, who is like the co founder. And yeah. You know, an older guy with DMD living in Edinburgh, and I very much think he's inspirational to me. And he is certainly meeting him when I was doing my film, he gave me that kind of push I needed to get out and living independently. Mm -hmm. And uh, my life has absolutely transformed since then. So I think Pathfinder is, it's not just about me wanting to give something back. It's about me identifying what I can get out of this as well. So, you know, it's very much kind of Pathfinders is for everyone, and everyone can get something out of it, really. Yeah. I mean, we, we did have the, the question of whether it should be specifically about Duchenne. I mean, we kind of we came to the conclusion that we weren't going to exclude anyone with similar conditions, but mm. the, kind of, the value of it was that we were sharing quite a similar perspective, and that was a value. But I'd like to see these kind of groups happening everywhere for... Yeah. All different conditions. I think we, we have that opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and hopefully through Muscle Hour we can help to push 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 them mm. out in their own different mm -hmm. forms in their own different way. Yeah, that's wonderful. Wonderful uh end to the episode, I think, as well. Join us next episode where we'll be talking about another topic quite similar but in a different way and yeah as always if you've enjoyed remember to like subscribe follow all the other things depending on what medium that you've watched it on and yeah we'll catch you again real soon thanks bye for bye, bye, -bye.